My name is Joe Shear, and today I'm going to give a brief introduction to the Gram stain procedure, and then I'm going to walk a student of mine through the procedure so you can see how it's done. The images in today's presentation are being taken from the textbook that I'm using this semester to teach microbiology. So, this is a very common technique. It is very widely used. It's the first stain that's used to identify bacteria because it allows us to classify the bacteria into one of two large groups of being gram positive or gram negative. So we are differentiating the bacteria into one of two groups. So we call this a differential stain. And you define differential stain as a stain that uses a series of reagents to distinguish one bacterial group from another. When we look at the slide that we started the presentation with, you can see the purple structures are referred to as gram positive because they retain a purple dye. The red or pink structures are referred to as gram negative because they retain a red or pink dye. So this has been around for a while. It was developed in the 1880s by Dr. Hans Graham. He published his findings in 1884. Now, he was a Danish physician who was working in a lab in Berlin where they were studying lung biopsies of patients who had recently died from pneumonia. And what he was able to find was that there were two bacteria, two different bacteria, that were causing the clinical symptoms of pneumonia. Uh, in this series of stains that he was applying, some of them would retain a purple, other would retain a red. So he had gram-positive purple bacteria, gram-negative red bacteria, that were resulting in the same clinical symptoms for pneumonia. So let's talk a little bit about this technique that Dr. Graham developed. Prior to the step one that I have up here, you take you know, the bacteria specimen that you're looking at and you heat fix it to a slide. You make a bacterial smear, pass it over a flame, kill the bacteria, and then you flood it with primary stain. And it's called primary stain because it's the first stain that we're putting on, and it's intended to flood both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria and stain them both purple. So you put this crystal violet onto the bacteria, and uh, it's referred to as a basic dye. It's uh, also referred to as a cationic dye because it has a positive charge associated with it. So the positive charge of this dye will be attracted to negatively, star negatively charged structures in the uh, bacterial cell wall. So we let this uh, react for a minute, and then we rinse it with distilled water, and we proceed to step two. Step two involves Graham's iodine, which uh, fixes the dye. It's actually referred to as a mordant. And a mordant is a substance that increases the affinity of the dye for the cellular components. And it does this by forming a dye-iodine complex. So the iodine is going to bind to the dye, and it's going to become trapped in the peptidoglycan cell wall. So uh, it's going to be a lot harder to, to wash this out of the cell especially in the gram-positive bacteria. So we do this, let it sit for a minute, and then we are going to rinse it once again with distilled water. And then we are going to decolorize with a 95% alcohol solution. When I say decolorize, what I'm saying there is we are going to remove the diiodine complex from the gram-negative walls. It will be retained by the gram-positive walls but it will be removed from the gram-negative cell walls. So we once again rinse with water. Uh, one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to decolorize for too long. If you add this alcohol solution, you leave it on the specimen for too long, it will decolorize gram-positive uh, bacteria as well, or at least make them appear pinkish. So then we come to step four. Step four is adding another stain called saccharin, and this is a red stain, and what it's going to do is it's going to stain the decolored gram-negative cells pink or red. So now we've just completed the procedure where we have gram-positive purple bacteria and gram-negative pink bacteria. 
once again, we rinse with distilled water to remove the excess stain. Then we get bibulous paper and we blot it dry and we examine it under a microscope. So this slide right here summarizes the procedure. Uh, once again, we start by heat fixing the bacterial specimen to a slide and then we take our primary stain of crystal violet. We add that, we let it sit for a minute, we rinse it with still water, then we go to step two where we add this mordant, you know, where we fix the stain to the gram positive bacteria, and then we once again let it sit for a minute, rinse with water, add alcohol to decolorize the gram negative bacteria, and here in a second I'm going to talk about how this takes place. Why are we decolorizing the gram negative bacteria and not the gram positive bacteria? And then we rinse with water, add our counter stain of saffronin, and we have gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So, so why are we seeing this differential stain? Because of the cell walls of gram positive and gram negative bacteria are different. So, gram negative bacteria have a structure called an outer membrane that gram positive bacteria don't have. The next two slides are going to be pictures showing this. So here's a gram-positive bacteria. And you can see its outer layer is a very thick wall of glycan. It has this structure called uh, picoic acid in it that actually gives it its negative charge. But this right here, very thick, you're going to see a stark contrast to the gram-negative bacteria. Here's the gram-negative bacteria. And look how small this glycan layer is. And not only that, you have this outer membrane that is uh, made up of something called um, lipopolysaccharide, lipopolysaccharide, uh, which is endotoxic. And uh, basically, when you add the, the alcohol to decolorize these bacteria, the alcohol will disintegrate this outer membrane layer, and it will it will cause the dye to be removed from this very thin glycan layer. But when you look at the much thicker glycan of the gram positive, this actually dehydrates and retains the, uh, the dye. So that's why we're seeing the difference uh, in the abilities to retain the dye. It's all about very thick glycan and gram positive bacteria that will dehydrate, retain. And then you have this thin glycan layer that is side of this uh, outer membrane that is able to be destroyed by the alcohol decolorants. So, what's the big deal? <laughs> you know, why do we need to have gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria uh, identified? Well, this can be used in the preliminary identification of bacteria and uh, the diagnosis of infection. So if I go to the doctor, I can give a urine specimen, I can give a saliva specimen, and they can look at it, and based on what they find of being gram-positive or gram-negative, it's going to influence the type of uh, medication they can give me. Penicillin, for example, that is able to have an effect on gram-positive bacteria because it disrupts the linkages between the peptidoglycan mo molecules of the cell wall. While uh, it's not able to get through that outer membrane of the uh, gram-negative bacteria. So if you can do this procedure, and then you know that you have gram-positive bacteria causing something, you give it penicillin. If it's a gram-negative bacteria, then you're gonna have to give a broader spectrum uh, drugs such as synthetic penicillin, like ampicillin. 